Life at the Top by Veronica Ellis Informational Text Some people climb mountains for the challenge. Others climb for the view from the top. They may stay long enough to snap some photos, and then they turn around and climb back down. Then there's another group. These folks travel up, up, and up, and then stay there for days, weeks, or months. Or they move there permanently. These are athletes who believe in the power of being at the top. They're convinced that training at high altitude, 8,000 feet or more above sea level, is the key to peak sports performance. They live by the idea that altitude builds stronger hearts, more efficient lungs, and better endurance. So when these athletes go back down to sea level, they can be faster, stronger, and just plain better than those who never left sea level. These long-distance runners are in training at the High Altitude Training Center. Running at High Altitude Runners, in particular, are fans of training at high altitudes. These days, altitude training is part of almost all tough runners' training programs. Since 1968, 95% of all runners who have won medals in World Championships and the Olympic Games have trained or lived at high altitude. That's enough to persuade any athlete to head for the hills. Many runners attend special high-altitude training camps to prepare for marathons, the Olympics, and other races. One of the most famous of these camps is located in Kenya, Africa. It's called, unsurprisingly, the High Altitude Training Center. The center is in the village of Aiten on top of a steep cliff overlooking Kenya's Great Rift Valley. At its highest spots, the Great Rift Valley is almost 7,000 feet above sea level. That's not officially high altitude, but almost. The High Altitude Training Center was founded by Lorna Kipplegate. Kipplegate is a Kenyan runner who has competed in many long-distance races around the world. She raced in the Olympics, won World Road Running Championships three times, and won a gold medal at the World Cross Country Championships. In other words, she takes running very seriously. As a runner, Kiplegate has helped bring athletic fame to Kenya and to her people, the Kalenyan, who live in the Great Rift Valley. As the founder of the High Altitude Training Center, she has helped runners from around the world achieve their personal best. Kiplegate found the training center in 2000. Her goal was a simple one. She wanted to give other Kenyan girls and women the chance to train and excel. For Kiplegate, Deciding to create her running camp in the high-altitude town of Aiton was a no-brainer. For one thing, it's just above the place where she grew up and became a famous runner herself, the Great Rift Valley. Lorna Kiplegut, wearing orange, is the champion athlete who founded the High Altitude Training Center. Benefits of Altitude Growing up and becoming a runner in the Great Rift Valley also gave Kiplegut personal experience with the benefit of training at high altitude, and Kiplegut is just one of many, many world-class runners from that region. Here are some statistics to back up that claim. Kenyan journalist John Manners spent most of his career studying runners from his country. He found that Kalenian runners such as Kiplegut won about three-quarters of all races in Kenya, Yet, Kalogens make up only 10-12% to 12 of the country's population. Another study found that Kalogen athletes won approximately 40% of all major international mid- and long-distance running competitions during a 10-year period. Kenyan runner Joyce Kipkuri, far right, won this 8-kilometer race. What happens up there? Does living and training at high altitude contribute to these athletes' success? The runners who flock to training camps such as Kiplegut's clearly think so. But what does science say about all of this? There has been a lot of research on the subject. However, scientists still don't know for sure if high-altitude training can help improve athletic performance. One thing is for sure, your body performs differently when you are far above sea level. If you've ever traveled to a high altitude, you know that it can be harder to breathe up there. At first... That's because the air pressure is lower the higher you go. 
When air pressure is low, air particles are farther apart. Air particles contain oxygen, so when you're higher up, you don't breathe in as many air particles. That means your body takes in less oxygen than it would at sea level. But after you've been at high altitude for a while, your body adjusts. It starts to make more red blood cells. These are the cells that carry oxygen in the body. More red blood cells means you can breathe more easily. After you've adjusted to a higher altitude, you can hike, climb, bike, or run longer up there than you could at sea level. That's because you have more oxygen in your blood. Your lungs become more efficient too. They expand more to take in more air. You breathe harder and deeper at high altitudes to take in more fresh air. Spending time at high altitude can also be good for people's heart health. Scientists believe the lower oxygen level in the air may ignite or start up certain genes in the body. These genes cause the heart muscles to work more effectively. Training at high altitude changes the rate at which the heart beats and how much blood it pushes with each heartbeat. Capacity of lungs increases at high altitude so they can take in more air at once. High altitude training can increase blood flow to muscles and let them do more work before getting tired. Bodies also adapt at higher altitudes by losing weight. If you live in a high altitude area, you'll have a lower appetite than people who live at sea level. Why? At high altitudes, your body makes more of a hormone that makes you feel full faster. As a result, you'll eat less. That makes a difference for runners. Being thinner can help you run faster. To run, you move forward by jumping into the air. When you jump, you're fighting gravity. The more you weigh, the harder that is. All of these benefits of high altitude may mean better athletic performance at sea level. It's not hard to understand why. Athletes who train at 8,000 feet or more have greater lung capacity, heart strength, and endurance. They can speed past someone who has been training only at sea level. Is it all about altitude? But how much of the collegian runner's success is really due to altitude? Might other factors be involved? For example, the land in the Great Rift Valley is mostly flat, and the weather is mild all year long. That means runners can train outside regularly. This is a big advantage. Of course, other places have flat land, other places have good weather, yet other places don't have so many good runners. This Olympic gold medalist trains at the High Altitude Training Center. Some people say the collegian diet helps with running speed. It's a plain diet. It includes foods such as corn, sweet potatoes, and other local crops. Their staple meal is called yugali, a paste usually made from cornmeal. It's often served with stewed vegetables. Although a meal like this is simple, it contains a lot of nutrients. It's also high in carbohydrates. Those give the body long-lasting energy. However, many people around the world eat similar diets, yet they aren't winning most of the world's long-distance races. Some give another explanation for a collegian's runner's greatness. They have a very active lifestyle. Many collegian families farm and herd cattle. That means they move around a lot. But again, so do people in many other parts of the world. People also often say that collegian children run more than other children. There are many stories about children running in groups to and from school each day. According to these stories, often they run barefoot. The barefoot part is important. This is because barefoot runners touch the ground with their forefoot or midfoot. Scientists say that's less stressful than hitting the ground heel first. Less stress on the feet makes people run faster. However, these running stories may be exaggerated. Many adult collegian runners report they took the bus or walked to school as children. So much for that theory. There are two other explanations for why the collegian people produce so many great runners. One is economic. Kenya has a poor economy. By winning one marathon, a collegian might earn enough to live one for an entire lifetime. That's pretty good motivation. Another related explanation is social. Mental toughness is a highly valued trait among the collegian. Without it, no athlete can get far. In addition, collegian runners are surrounded by other runners. 
that's motivating too. The Role of Community and Hard Work Lorna Kippelgut's High Altitude Training Center and others of its kind are built around the idea of running and achieving your best as part of a community. High altitude training may make runners faster. However, the support of others helps many athletes keep going when they might want to quit. Mary Kitney is another world champion Kenyan runner. She trained in Eiton too. Like Lorna Kippelgut, Kitney competes in and wins marathons and long-distance races around the world. She wins at high and low altitudes. Kitney started her professional running career about a decade ago. She first won Kenya's largest women's-only race. It's called the Shoe for Africa 5K. The organization Shoe for Africa is supported by Lorna Kipplegate and many others. It raises money for health care and education all over Africa. In interviews, Kitney credits hard work, not high altitude, for her winning ways. But there's no question that for her, as for Kibblegut, working hard at high altitudes has produced great results. Runner Mary Kitney broke a marathon world record in 2017. These days, high altitude training is not limited to Kenya. The trend of training up high seems to be expanding as fast as runners' lung capacity. High altitude training centers have popped up all over. You can find them in the French Pyrenees mountain range. They're in South Africa. They're in Colorado, too. Effective high altitude training requires more than just climbing to 8,000 feet, though. Trainers who believe in the power of altitude usually have a few rules to follow. For one, they say athletes should stay at high altitudes for 18 to 28 days. Less than that, and they won't achieve the full benefits. Many trainers believe athletes need to time their training just right, too. Some experts estimate that runners who come down from altitude more than two or three weeks before a race will erase the benefits of their high-altitude training. What can other athletes learn from collegian runners? No doubt the collegian have geography in their favor. They have high altitude, flat land, and a mild climate. A nutrient-rich diet and active lifestyle also help. Most important, perhaps, are drive and determination. When it comes down to it, the collegian may not win races just because of the geography of their area. Runners hoping to improve can add high-altitude training. However, they should also pay attention to the fact that the collegian might be the hardest-working runners on Earth. Edna Kippelgut won the 2017 Boston Marathon.